much for organizing this and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, in our endeavor, in our effort, in whatever good things you are doing. Bi'idhnillah. So the topic that has been mentioned is about the roles of parents. There are three talks, one tonight, the others uh, later this year, inshallah. And uh, if you are parents, and hope most of you are parents, alhamdulillah, then definitely the responsibility or the burden of responsibility uh, is understood by you. I am a grandparent, so uh, just enjoying the grandchildren's company. I don't have any responsibility. S sisters are not listening, hearing. Is it? Can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Jazakumullah khair. So what I was saying that um, uh, if, you are, if you are a parent, then you know the burden of the responsibility. And um, uh, it is huge. That's why my slide that I'm showing now uh, is about the biggest burden on earth. That's the eternal investment. And um, we know this world is a transitory world. And for individuals, lifespan depends on the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people die in childhood, some people die in adulthood, some people die in full age. Full age means maybe 80, 90, or 100, around 100. Compared to the eternity, this is meaningless. This is zero. You know that highest number probably that people understand is trillion, 12 zeros after one. But compared to eternity, even trillion, trillion, that could be meaningless or could be zero. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us to this world, this world, this earth, for a test. So that within this lifespan, whatever we do, that has a result. And that result in the day of the judgment, after, after, after the qiyamah, that will be eternal, whether good or bad. So from the Quranic ayat that we, some of you, some of us might be knowing, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Ya Ayyuhalladzina Amanu, Ku Anfusakum Ahlikum Nara. That means um, Allah SWT addresses us as believers and asks us, wants us to save ourselves and our ahl from the fire. I'll be very brief on this because those who have familiarity with the Quran, they will be knowing this, and probably this ayat is very well known. Imams and others discuss this in khutbas. So at the end of the day, it's a responsibility on us uh, to save ourselves from fire, as well as people within our periphery, our, our uh, sort of supervision. So as parents, children, we have a responsibility over children. And in the family, there are mutual responsibilities. And here, ahal means, it doesn't simply mean husband, wife, or mom, dad, or children. Ahal could be close blood relations, other relations, or people living near us, very near us. And there's a beautiful hadith in terms of this responsibility, parental responsibility towards uh, their children is encapsulated in a beautiful hadith and, um, and there's English translation is there. When a child dies, a uh, ch child of Adam dies, all deeds are cut off except three, and probably we know this as well. One is the Sadaqa Jariya, continuous charity. The other one is Elm Nafia, that means uh, Elm or knowledge that benefits people. And the other one is the pious child's dua for parents. Dua while the parents are alive in this world, and dua when parents leave this world and children also, when they become adults, they become parents and they will die. So this is, this is very straightforward hadith that encapsulates parental responsibility towards raising our children so that they are in a position to make dua. They should know Islam, they should be practicing Islam, otherwise dua 
they will not even understand what dua is. And in our society, in a society that we are living in, it's a post-religious society, religion virtually has been jettisoned from this society. And Muslims are living in this and becoming more materialist and commercialized, unfortunately, is there under the influence of materialism or hedonism. Okay, so we talked about eternal investment. Now I talk about the investing the future, investing in our lifetime, or that, and that can be apparent. And at the end of the day, parenting is about raising our children as better human beings. We are, alhamdulillah, we, um, we, we are good in many ways, but we can be better, we can be best. Our effort is to become better. So better human, better citizen, and better Muslim. These are the three things that we should try to understand in the, in, in the pers uh, perspectives of the context of the Western society where citizenship, right, and responsibility is really, really serious. Unlike some Muslim countries or dictatorial countries where there is no citizenship right and establishment can do anything that they like, in this society, at least there is a, 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 due, a due process of law. Although things are being Things are being change, changing, and un, are changing unfortunately. But um, as long as the judicial system will maintain its neutrality, and there will be basic um, uh, common sense separation of all these spheres uh, of um, uh, government and basic human rights, um, there is a responsibility for us to try to become better citizen in the sense we don't violate law of the land Rather, we, through our civic responsibilities, we help the society in many ways. We can become a force for good in the society. We can become work for the common good of all. And uh, common wisdom throughout the history, one of them uh, was this um, philosopher, Confucius. He mentioned something that is more or less uh, important for this world, and uh, is parallel to our understanding. What he said is, if your plan is for one year, then plant rice or crops. But if your plan is for 10 severe years or 10 years, then plant trees, because trees can go for 5, 10, 15, 100 years. But if you plan for hundreds of years, then plant human beings. At the end of the day, uh, civilizations are created by people, those who have the ability to create. And later on, after generation after generation, they become, uh, they, they reduce to normal people, and civilization is lost. Muslim civilization was there for around 100,000 years, because generation after generation, Muslim parents, the community, the mosques, the establishment institutions, produced Muslim citizens. Unfortunately, during the time of colonization or before that, and now things have been totally different, but that's a different discussion. The next slide is about these um, parental roles. And uh, straight away I'll go into three distinct responsibilities. And one of them is nurturing, essentially nursing our children to become adult and human beings. The other one is structuring, it's a term, but we could call it discipline and direction. Nursing could be called balanced, wholesome growth. Other one is educating. So let's go through the nurturing first. At the end of the day, from the moment a child is conceived and in the mother's womb, gradually becoming bigger in the mother's womb, mother's food is their food, a child's food. Mother's nourishment, intellectual, spiritual, physical nourishment, is the child, child's nourishment. And uh, when the umbilical cord is cut and the child comes to this world, then a child becomes a separate entity. And from that moment, the nourishment takes a different shape. So the whole purpose of nourish, nurturing is to have a balanced, wholesome growth, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual growth of a child. And our responsibility, parental responsibility, legally, from the Islamic point of view, until the child is um, the, um, before puberty. 
moral and other responsibility remains. Okay, the moment a child crosses puberty, the angels started writing his or her actions. Whatever parents gave to the child, whatever ch ch a child has acquired in, 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 in his or her life by the time 11, 12, or 13, that is fundamentally important. That doesn't mean that Muslim parenting ends. I know in this society, when ch a child becomes 16, could be legally separate. But th that's the law of the land. So providing basic, basic needs, physical needs, security, giving love, attention, time, support, understanding, and acceptance, or validation, or whatever we call it. It is a 24-7 responsibility. And within this nurturing, there are phases of nurture. From birth to, say, two years, winning period is the, the say, mom res mom's responsibility is near 100%. They will not be able to feed their um, milk, but uh, at the end of the day, this is the period when child's, uh, because umbil umbilical cord was cut, and gradually it takes months and probably years to emotionally or feeling that child is now becoming a human being. Child has been a human being since the birth. But um, age, uh, age, age factor is important. From two and a half or three years until five years, there is a phase. Five years to eight years, there is a phase. Eight or nine years to pu puberty is another phase. But that's another discussion. Then structuring also is important in the sense that it's not only for children's structuring or disciplining of life. If moms and dads, parents are disciplined or structured, informally or formally, whatever it is, life is well balanced. Children get the idea of life subconsciously from their parents. If, ch if they see parents praying, standing, doing sujood and and um, bowing, children may follow. Because children's brain, when they're born, is about 80 to 90% of, of the normal brain. Body may be very small, but children's, the moment a child is born, brain is uh, 80 to 90%. That means child can encapsulate, but although cannot express. And brain's, the brain is like a sponge, whatever is fed, a child sees, hears, observes, that is impacted or impinged on the, on the brain. If it's like a sponge, eh? put the sponge in milk and squeeze it, milk will come out. In a water, water will come out. In a ro bad things, bad thing will come out. So that's why the home environment, parental role modeling is fundamentally important from the day one. Um, structuring comes when children becomes uh, say two, three, and can talk and can make noise, can, can break things, can obey or disobey, if I can use this word. Discipline is important. And discipline is giving direction. Discipline is not punishment. Directing their lives so that they uh, grow up in a, in a way that is f um, structured. It's not like a um, like a crowd. Crowds are not structured. Police, army, and when they, when they are structured, they look, they look wonderful. But human life is not regimental like the army or police. Or nor it should be totally chaotic like a crowd. So it has to be in the middle. So establishing rule is important. One doesn't have to, like a teacher, sit down with the children and write down is informally established and gradually when children grow, parents can do this formally and ask children to write down. That's up to them. Setting boundaries and teaching consequences of what children do. If they touch fire, their finger will burn. So that's the consequence. If they throw something, throw something somebody can get hurt or can, things can break. break. These are the cause and effect of human life. Teaching them values, that is also fundamentally important. Values that could be universal human values, Muslim values, citizenship values, 
some years ago, uh, when uh, Cameron was the prime, uh, prime minister, British values, there was a big question, and Muslims are asked, to, asked whether they know the British values. And uh, some of them who were socially or politically active, we had to face this. <coughs> and we, we argued that, well, British values and universal values, do you think that they should be different? A country's values, a social values, and this should tell you with universal human values. And third aspect is educating, uh, educating to become good humans, good citizens, and good Muslims. So these three, nurturing, structuring, educating, go in tandem, parallelly. Giving social and life skills in, uh, in their life, social skills in uh, how to manage anger, how to talk with other people um, uh, as human beings, as Muslims we have separate ways of communicating. We give salam, and um, when we sneeze, we say alhamdulillah. These are, the, these are the things that Islam teaches us. And this is also social, social, social values and table manners are important. And also life skill, at, at least a child can live um, in their life by earning something to survive. Otherwise, a child may not be academic, a child may not, may not have the ability, all the abilities that other, other children may have. But in this society, even uh, special needs education children are given importance so that at least in their life they are not totally dependent on their family, on the community. They can do something. So life skills could vary depending on uh, family background and um, uh, social background. And raising our children, I'm talking as, as a Muslim now, uh, that Muslim perspective, raising our children as an asset for our own community and force for good for the society. This is important as well. If we live in a society for generation after generation, but we don't belong, we don't relate to the society, relate to the society uh, then we are not part of the society. Human beings should be part of the society. Prophets were thrown out from their own land, say Ibrahim al-Islam and Lut al-Islam. Lut al-Islam was born in Iraq. He uh, lived in Transjordan that those people are viles. But he made those people as his community. Ya qawmi ibudullah, oh my people. So those, who, those of us who are living in this society for decades, generations, uh, do we really feel part of the society? Do we have the sense of belonging? We know there are many things um, that, that, uh, that are problematic, Islamophobia, racism, discrimination, they are there. And these issues is present in almost every society. In Muslim societies, they are in different forms. Many Muslim societies, uh, countries. So force for good for the this, for this society. If, if Muslims' children are raised with proper nurturing, with give good, good structure, and they are educated to become a contributory part of the society, they will be valued. Nobody can, nobody can point fingers at them. I know the, the, the racists and Islam folks will always do this. But truth is always truth. Fact is always fact. OK, so these are the three important aspects of parental, parental roles, nurturing, structuring, and educating. Now let me say a few things about parental roles regarding uh, the balance of nurturing. Because what happens if a child is nurtured, I, uh, after that I'll show you, show you a slide, is that, is that like a plant. Uh, gardeners, they nurture their plants and they know where to put the plant. The plant should get some sunshine, air, water, protection. A child, a plant nursery and child nursery, there is some similarity. Children need protection as well. Children need all sorts of uh, environment. So if we put too much things on them, nurturing, too much nurturing in the sense that we make them dependent, then they can become protective and children can become intrusive 
and they will not be able to probably learn life skills. And children will grow up e egocentric. I have dealt with many uh, problem children in the sense that uh, when I was a special needs teacher, dealing with the children with behavior difficulties for about uh, 15 years, children, those who bring problem in the classroom, they have the share of their problem at home. I visited some homes as well and to see what's the family background. Uh, neglectful parents, parents over, or over intrusive parents, uh, gr uh, they don't know how to handle or raise their children. As a result, uh, they grow up as egocentric or angry. But on the other hand, if we give too less nurturing, then they will remain emotionally distant. It's just like putting exact amount of water in the plant. If you put too much water, the plant may die. If you don't put enough water, it may, it may dry because of, because of dehydration. So this par par parallel is important. And too little nurturing can bring, um, um, uh, there's no enough involvement in the family. Parents are not involved, children will not be involved. They will not, children will not feel loved. And trust issue will be, will be weaker. For, for the children. Now, let's see how structure balance is important. Sorry. It's going the other way. No. Okay. Somehow it doesn't go back. Anyway, let me. My goodness. Why is this? Okay. <coughs> the Structure balance. Oh. Subhanallah. Anyway, if it is too much of discipline, sorry, it is moving. <laughs> Subhanallah. Is there an expert in here? It seems to be. It seems to be automatically moving without me touching. <laughs> Anyway, so a structure, if too much discipline, you know that if it is, if, if, if parents breathe on the children's neck always, that's the term that uh, we teachers sometimes use, breathing on the neck, that means you always keep an eye on, have you done this, have you done this, have you not, always questioning, 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 too much, too much discipline or structure, then uh, they will feel overly controlled and they will see parents as, rig as rigid. Children may rebel at some stage, and we have seen this in life. Children may not be able to think for themselves because everything is being said from the top. It's like dictatorial society. In a dictatorial society, there may be food and clothes and roads and everything are maybe perfect, but there is no freedom. On the other hand, if there is no discipline at all, then there's another problem. That's the other way around. A child becomes um, it's just like a um, free fall. Doesn't know discipline, doesn't know where to go, doesn't know how to, uh, when, to, when to come home, when to eat, when to sleep. So balance is important in human life. And in Islam, balance is fundamentally important because our religion is a middle way religion. And Muslim Ummah should be the Ummah Wasata. That means the middle, middle path community. Extreme rigidity, extreme liberalism can take um, groups or individuals to the periphery of Islam, can, can, be take, can take away from Islam. If everybody, if someone feels that everybody is kafir, because there are Muslims who feel that th those who don't believe like, like them, practice like them, they may be kafir. 
On the other hand, there is no Islam, there is no, there is no rules and regulations at all in the, in the, uh, in Islam. So, this is important. So, at the end of the day, parental roles are, they are the edu um, educators, they are teachers, teachers in the sense, not the formal teachers, but they teach, any, anybody that teaches is a teacher. Prophet Sallallahu was the greatest teacher on earth. They are the mentors of their own children. They are guides, friends, but they are not friends, they are friendly. We have to remember that parents are not friends to their children, but parents must be friendly to their children. And they are of course protectors, like, like you protect, protect a plant from harm. And the best one is, the best one for them is they should be the role models. Because when children are small, they cannot verbally communicate or explain themselves or answer. Only thing they can do is see, watch, and express themselves through cry or a smile. And um, when they see good things in the family, there is no fighting, there is no argument, there is no shout. And uh, they, they will grow up with this, uh, with, with this, uh, with, uh, subconsciously they will follow. In a family there is there's argument constantly and there is a loud music always. Children's brain will be catching them. Catching them. So, I'm not saying that parents can be perfect role models. We never are. Apart from prophets, nobody is perfect on earth. But what we can do, as best as we can, we try to, as a spouse, husband, wife, mom and, da mom, mom and dad together, as one unit, they behave with their children in that manner. They talk, and when children grow up, there is no um, differences of opinion in front of the children and all these things that parents should mutually uh, discuss within themselves so, so that uh, children see just one, one entity, parents. Of course, within the parents there is mom, there is dad. But if there is argument in front of the children or undermining one spouse by the other, initially child will not understand, gradually they will be fed up. And I, know, I, I have seen some families, children don't want to go home after after the school, they, they just hang around because they know, th they know that the moment they go home, there will be shouting or whatever it is. And that is the role modeling that, a, that parents can give to their own children. Okay, I just mentioned this before. Uh, children and plants, they are a wonderful, co wonderful correlation, of course. Plants are plants. They are not human beings. Human beings are the steward of Allah on earth, caliph of Allah on earth. Uh, so, and uh, plants grow within probably one or two years, or five, 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 six years, and by the time a, pl a plant life could be hundreds of years. A human beings, they take pre-puberty period to grow initially, then their responsibility spiritual legal responsibility from the Islamic point of view starts, but we as human beings keep on learning until our death. So our children need love and care, safety, nourishment, positive environment. Plants need nutrient soil, fresh air, plenty of light, enough water, and protection. Mom and dad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided or uh, sent a human being in two people's uh, home, family. So mom and dad required for a child to come to this world apart from Ibrahim al Islam and, and um, Isa al Islam. Sorry, Adam al Islam was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isa, Isa al Islam was born without any father. But uh, that's the natural um, the way of human beings coming to this world. So 
mom and dad, they are fundamentally important. And responsibilities of mom and dad towards their children, when children are pre-puberty -pre period, and the responsibility of children to their mom and dad, when mom and dad become frail or old, reciprocal, virtually. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran. So men and women are pair, each with unique roles and uh, responsibilities. According to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we all um, on our own fate, by our own actions. And so we have some s complementary rules. We have some similar rules. Okay. There's a saying in, 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 the, in the English language that it needs a village to raise a child. That means, village means probably Muslim countries' village at the moment. Western society, developed countries' village are not village anymore. They have become cities, part of the extended. There is, there is some quietness, of course, unlike the capital city or big cities, but um, village and city has become blurred in the, in the developed countries. But in the non-developed countries, Villages are villages in the sense that everybody knows it, it, one another. And parenting is carried out by villages, uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters. Well, everybody know, everybody ch knows everybody's ch child. And if someone does good, wor good work, the whole village praises. And if someone does some, something bad, everybody know, in the village knows that. And also, in times, of, in times of difficulties, everybody comes and helps. But in the developed society, like in, say, in, in London, things are not as easy. Things are difficult. We don't have the luxury of being supported by others, unless we have very close friends or close family members. So in our situation, we need two parents to raise our children. Parenting or raising children is not just mom's responsibility. Sometimes some Asian parents may think, dump everything on the, on the moms. Even if mom works in the, in, 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 for uh, earning money or supporting family, at the end of the day when they go home, mom goes to the kitchen and father probably, dad probably watches te television. This is, this is a, this is, there is some example of this. So mom and dad, have joint responsibility, individual responsibility. And they need to be, if they, if they know, about, know, know Islam and parental role, they will know this. The other thing is, parenthood and parenting are two different things. Parenthood is about this natural nurturing, normal educating, but raising them as good human, good citizen, good Muslim, or steward of Allah on earth, Khalifa of Allah on earth, that needs an endeavor, that needs a process. If a child cries, every, every mom and dad will find out the reason of the cry is, 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 is um, either, either hunger or something else. And that's the biological, biological responsibility, that's the animalistic feeling. But whether a child is becoming a learning a other of akhlaq that is required in Islam, that needs the knowledge of Islam, that needs personal character as well. Parental character is also important. So parenthood is simple. It's just process of raising physically or giving some education. Parenting is an endeavor or it needs, it needs skills and it needs, it, need, it needs knowledge and consistent endeavor to raise a child to become good human, good, good citizens, and good Muslims, as well as, um, in our uh, the wider world, is Allah's steward on earth. Mom and dad should agree within themselves their parental styles. Parenting styles could be very rigid, could be very liberal, could be balanced, authoritative. And there are three, four, and it's, it, these are the issues that, um, um, Parents could be neglectful to their own children, like the probably some of those who have read Matilda. Her parents were just neglectful parents. So they, and that's a different discussion, but 
if parents are neglectful or they don't know how to discipline their children, they could be in problem due to child protection, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and neglect. But that's a different discussion. And when I say role model, parents have to be role models to the children, but each parent, mom, should be role model to the bo boy and girl. Dad should be role model to, to boy and girl both. It's not that mom is the role model of daughter and dad is the role model of the boys. Because if dad's behavior is, uh, is not good, then a daughter will see a man, that means her father, as a bad human being, then she will, when she goes, sh when she um, <coughs> will go for marrying some man, she subconsciously remember that that man could be like her father. In the same way, the mother could be. So, role modeling should be for both boys and girls, each mom or each dad. And the other thing is, there is no perfect parenting. We cannot be perfect, but we can try our best. And all those questions comes in the Western society about one parent family. For whatever reason, if there is one parent family, either mom or dad, what, whoever looks after, has to have extra, carry the extra burden, learn some of the, some of the skills. At the end of the day, a, a boy or girl needs both male figure and female figure. And that's the ideal. But we don't live in an ideal world. Managing pluralism in the sense that uh, we live in a diverse society where there are Muslims, non-Muslims, there are different ethnicity, and within Muslims there are division, there are, there are diversity. And this is the microcosm of the human being on earth. Uh, 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 on earth. So this is called plural, pluralism, or diver uh, we, have to li we have to know how to live with this diversity. And diversity means we can have differences of opinions as well. And modernity that we see today, there is no sin in this society, there is only crime. Western society have become post-religious. So in this society, consensual sex between 12, 13 year old boy and girl uh, is not liked, but if they are consensual, that is okay. Society will look after them if they have children. In Islam, this is, uh, this is, this is sin. But the concept of sin is for, for, forgotten in the, from the verse. Long ago, five, seven decades ago, when boys and girls were living together, they used to be called living in sin. But this, this word or phrase has been taken away from the dictionary. There is no living in sin anywhere. It's just cohabitation. And uh, people do this. And this is coming to the Muslim, Muslim communities as well. I know some cases, personally know some cases. Relationship and without getting married, having th they have children, unfortunately, sadly. Managing device. Device means this, um, what, uh, this all the devices, screens, television. Television is, now, um, is not that. 20, 20 years ago, television, I used to call them terrible virus. TV means terrible virus. Now, terrible virus is just palm held the telef telephone set or iPhone or uh, whatever. And this one can contain uh, as many things as this computer can contain, from pornography to terrorism to best thing on the earth. It depends on how we raise our children so that they can, they can pick and choose and many children have lost ev everything. And you know, three, ch three girls from Tower, Tower Hamlet's, uh, uh, one of the Tower Hamlet's school in 2014, they were indoctrinated by this. By this means, this is inanimate, but uh, things that came through social media to them, and they were totally ind indoctrinated. They went, to si they went to Syria through um, Turkey, and you know what happened to them. I'll come to an end with this slide, home and family. Because we have been discussing about the nurturing, nurturing home is the essence. 
family, home, these are the fundamental human institution. Once this institution will, is damaged, society will be damaged. And we know historically, powerful nations lost everything because their social structure uh, became polluted. And uh, marriage-based family is, has been there in all religions, all cultures, historically. Now, family structure has changed. We had marriage-based family, then became marriage-based, uh, that was the extended family in the beginning, then became nuclear family, after industrial revolution when women need, needed to work, husband, wife, and two, three children, their grand grandparents, they became periphery, totally periphery. Then became the uh, cohabitation family. And cohabitation, this is called the blended family in the sense, um, normally women suffer because they live together, have children, and we may bear the, bear the children. They don't like each other, they separate, they marry, or they, they go for another boyfriend or as a result, the children born from previous um, relationship becomes step children. And there's abuse of step children in this country. That's called step families. Or it's called blended families. So this is the third category. Fourth category is, is already established in the developed countries. That's the same sex families. But that's a different discussion. And from our perspective, home is the essence. Home is the organization that is the primordial human organization and um, home means it is a nursery, it's a school, it's a madrasa, it's, a, it's everything. It's a 24 7 responsibility. And mom and dad should share this responsibility. E schools or madrasa or Islamic schools cater for only 35, 35 hours a week out of 168 hours and excluding holidays. So it's the parental responsibilities. If the family is happy, sweet, loving, cool, stable, secured, then thing that we have discussed, children naturally will grow, seeing this, hearing this, observing this, and uh, more than 50% education is, is, is done. The rest is just afforded by parents to formally teach them, and teachers and imams to formally teach them. But if the family is broken, unhappy, neglectful, cold, dysfunctional, then the, the children's future is um, totally, uh, can be totally destroyed. There can grow good children within this, that's an, that, that's an exception. And if you read the life story of those who created havoc in the world, you will find that they face problem in their own families. I think I've take, taken enough time and we can probably have some discussion and questions, inshallah. There's next session that will come l many months later on. We can discuss that separately. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Bihamdika. Shadu Allah. Ilaha illa. Anta. Astaghfiru. Katu. Alaik. Around 15 minutes. What are the ways of communicating? You can, brothers can, yeah, sisters, I can see some of them. So you can r raise with a bit loud, loudness. If anything is unclear, if anything you is, uh, you want to want me to repeat, or if you can, if you if you feel that the things I said could be could could be disagreed, that that's fine. Yes, sister. Devices issue is really difficult. I and it is getting more difficult because 
written things, written books, and um, everything is getting secondary now. But uh, I haven't discussed this aspect. Throughout the Islamic history, the Islamic tradition of raising children had three phases, from birth to seven, seven to 14, 14 to 21. Most important bit is from birth to year, uh, seven, year, seven year of a child. And birth is when children is born. But before that, as I mentioned, in the mother's womb, children when a baby, when it is five or six months old, can in effect communicate with the mother. And that's why mother's mental health, is spiritual health, can positively, uh, positive mental health and uh, spiritual health can positively affect their children after birth. And there had been a research long ago, I mentioned this in my, one of my books, um, that Edinburgh University did a research probably 20 years ago that if mothers are singers and they keep on singing when the children, five, six, seven month old children are in their womb, then potentially the child will become a singer. So imagine, and I think uh, if mothers are constantly reciting Quran, always do positive things, that will have a spiritual effect. So that's one thing. But after, after birth, seven year, at least seven years, uh, until seven years, parental, I will not use the word control, but parental discipline and rule modeling should be very evident. And um, until two, two years, at least two years, so the children will not be able to uh, use anything. But nowadays, unfortunately, because moms are busy, but dads are busy, some moms, uh, because they are tired as well, and children sometimes don't want to eat, easy way is to put something in the screen. And I think as much as possible, I'm not saying that um, uh, individual parental situation is different. As much as possible, keep this away from children at least two to three years. And bear some, um, some of the pressure, if possible. But it depends on husband and, husband and wife, mom and dad working together, helping each other. And if device becomes nanny or child minder, that's the danger. So there has to be control, even if you give them occasionally. And children will also know that uh, mom and dad, because they understand things, mom and dad do not use, sorry, do not use, sorry. Another thing is, on many occasions I have seen, mom and dad constantly use the device in front of the children and they ask the children not to use. It doesn't work. Because children are very sharp. And role modeling means what they see, they will follow. So mom and dad has to sacrifice many of their habits that could be harmful to the children, both mom and dad together, especially in front of the children. And also if children c grow a bit, uh, three, four, five, the other way is to keep them engaged with some household activities, household chores. If you have a garden, work in the garden. If you have got anything, to, um, when you cook something, just let, uh, ask them to help, chat with them. This is the way how we'll b uh, strengthen the relationship as well as they will keep themselves busy with you rather than with the device. So there are a few other things that mom and dad jointly should do. And until a child is seven, children should be raised with play and uh, with absolute freedom in the sense, <clears throat> whatever we want them to do, we don't pressure them, but we see whether they have got interest in that. If someone is very sharp in memory, we can ask them to re remember or memorize some part of the Quran or some poet, poet poems. So there is no pressure. There is <clears throat> formal education in Islam doesn't start until a child is seven. So I know this is not easy, but mom and dad should, should plan. And um, once you give your child, and depends when you give, 
the child should be mentally, emotionally, intellectually ready to follow you on his or her own. And uh, you, can, you can give some test beforehand so that you can rely that your child is not going to misuse this or overuse this. But that needs lots of commitment and uh, creative ideas and support from spouse or may maybe some other family members. If you have got elder, ch uh, elder, uh, elder children, they can probably help. Or if some other people are there around you, they may be help, able to help, help inshallah. Any other? Okay. They use that device each day, 20 minutes, no mm -hmm. more, no less. Yeah. And that looks like it's working for them. Yeah. So you can negotiate, you can, um, once children I are a bit, um, say, they have got a bit of maturity, you have got family sessions with them. In the family session, you ask your children, you discuss things, everything, that uh, uh, our eating time, our Quran time, our prayer time, our what we eat, at home, is it always chicken that children love or there should be vegetables or fish? You know, everything that a family does, that should be discussed in the family, family session. Mom, dad, children, even with small children. Take their opinions and through democracy, you more or less come to a better conclusion so that they also know that at home, there is a consultation. Their voice is heard. Their opinions are respected. So these family sessions are, are also very important. So negotiate with these children and set a rule that one, two, three, four, four at least not more than five rules uh, about uh, device time, eating time, and um, homework time, etc. cetera. Yes? Uh, about three Uh, who is hitting two-year-old? Two oh, two-year-old is hitting the parent. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think <coughs> by the time a child is two, hitting, hitting is not that hitting that deliberately, intentionally, abusively hitting the mom and dad. And uh, this is the winning period. It's still two, two, two year or two and a half year old. And um, uh, if this is a regular habit, and if you're worried, if you're not a psychologist or teacher yourself, then it's better talk with, it, with, 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 with the uh, um, health experts, or if, uh, cog is there any cognitive issue, if, is there any story in the family, and um, because that's not even the nursery. Nurs nursery starts in normally two, two and a half, apart from private nurseries. So if you're worried, then you should, uh, you should consult these uh, experts. But I would not worry normally if a two-year-old two -year child hits parents. Uh, it, is, it is a, if, because uh, the child is still s so little that uh, personality has not developed within, within himself or herself. And if, if a child is three or four, then that, that is more worrying. But uh, if someone is already then should consult the experts. Okay, the, uh, the next question is, how do we instill that Islamic values in a child when they are taught in school, the LGBH group? Okay, LGBT. Uh, it depends on the school age children. Sadly, in this country, five, six years old are given LGBT education. Now, this is one of the reasons I always advise our parents to have knowledge uh, of how I a school is run, how decisions are made in the school. And I always try to advise our young professionals to choose teaching as a career because uh, teachers, they can not only teach, they can help their community. Uh, so uh, if a subject is within the core subject, maths, science, English, if it is a part of science, 
Normally in the secondary, it is difficult to withdraw your children, but normally parents can withdraw their children from certain class. But all these things are gradually become strict, especially for Muslims. So uh, if you are to send, that's why some, some Muslims send their children to Islamic school, but Islamic school number is tiny, 170, 120 and they are only one formentary. Only 3% probably children, Muslim children, can go to Islamic schools. The rest, 97 or 95% children go to state schools. How do you cope with that? So parents have to know many things about education, education policies, law in this country. In the same way, parents should know many things about medicine because GPs in this country are overburdened, they make mistakes, and you, you have to have basic knowledge to even question GPs. So in the same way, if, if you have basic knowledge about education, education policies, and the role of teachers and the role of governing bodies, then if something goes wrong and you understand, then you can articulate and ask questions. So that's one way. So you can say you can withdraw, or you can talk to parent governors, so that syllabus, central government sends, uh, education department sends guidelines, and every borough has, has its own way of doing things, and individual school can can change something depending on the governing body. So if Muslims are parent governors, Muslims are, uh, are knowledgeable about education, if they are teachers, then they will be able to handle easily. So if you cannot withdraw your children, your children teaches, are, are taught these subjects in the secondary age or towards the end of primary, what you have to do and that's also parental responsibility. The moment you send a child to a school or nursery, once a child is back, either on the road when you pick up or at home, spend 10, 15 minutes with, with, with the child. Ask him or her what he or she has done. In the, has she faced bullying? Has she, has, has she seen something? What, uh, what about the teacher? Who is her best friend? is parental responsibility to know ins and outs of anything that happens around their child. There is no, there should not be any abdication of this responsibility. If they know this, then and parents can then cl clarify that soft, nice discussion. Okay, you have learned this from school, let's sit and talk. So child's brain is contaminated in some ways from outside. You have to decontaminate, and that has to be done every day. And in the weekends, you have got extra two days. In the holiday, you have got two days. So it's not just a mourning that our children are learning something where I cannot do anything. It's not like that. Every capable community where individuals are proactive, they handle things in their own way. Muslims are very, in many cases, very passive. Many of them are, are, uh, are not aware what happens. And especially, um, I have been running parenting, parenting courses and sessions since for two decades. I find most of them are our, our, our sisters. I know the men sometimes work and they cannot, but sometimes men are not interested even. So it's mom and dad jointly should take this up, learn things of the society, and seek advice from those who know things, and uh, especially those who have been in, the, in education, social service, uh, psychology area. And uh, it is not insurmountable. But if we, if we leave things as it is, if we give up, then we will only moan. And, and that, that's what is happening at the moment. OK? You have another one, probably. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's nearly nine. I think if there is nothing we can finish, what do you think, sisters, brothers? Okay. Thank you.